Your teenager has decided to start their own automotive detailing business over the summer break, but they need a way to educate their potential customers in the services that they offer. You offer to lend your mobile learning experience to help. Your teenager needs the educational tool to be mobile ready since the customers will be driving up in their cars. You decide to make it easy on yourself and use slides from the Quick Start projects. In this case, we are going to be using a couple of slides with fluid boxes already in place from the Aspire project. We're also going to use a cool font from Adobe called Condor Wide, which is reminiscent of the fonts automobile makers use. Make sure you install this font before working on the project. On the first slide, we have a picture of Nick and the title of the business. Simple enough. On the next slide, we'll add some salesmanship and convince potential customers that Nick is a good kid and is trustworthy. The following slide will have a drag and drop, but not like other drag and drops. Instead, we're going to use this drag and drop as a way to reveal more details about the services Nick offers and to allow the customer to make a selection. Customers can swap the packages out until they find the one that's just right for them. The tool will take the customer to the add-on page where they will have the option of selecting additional items they can add. Then, on the final slide, they will see a summary of all the services that they've chosen, including the costs. On the last slide, I'll show you how you can use a web object to open a form where Nick's customers can write a review on the services he's performed. When we go through this example, I'll show you all the steps I took to create this mobile-friendly interaction, but don't worry, you can use this as a template to recreate your own version for your organization. Okay, first thing we want to do is create a responsive project. Now let's go to the Assets window, and we need the following ready-to-go slides. The Welcome Layout from the Aspire Branching Scenario, and the Instructions Layout. Now I'll duplicate the Instructions Layout slide, so I have a few different copies of it here. I'll need five in total. So let's start with the new slide number one. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of the content that's here right now. And I'm going to select the top fluid box and we're going to import a new background into this fluid box here. So we're going to go to our select image from library and click import. And I have the appropriate image on my desktop already. Next, I'll select that same fluid box and click on the media icon in my toolbar and select image. We're going to import our picture of Nick. In the second fluid box, let's go ahead and add a shape, which we'll use as our title. So that looks good, but it doesn't really invoke a sense of automotive. So let's go to Adobe Fonts and find a font that looks automotive. I like Condor Black Italic. Let's activate that font. That looks great. And I need one more thing for this slide. I need a continue button. Let's see how this looks on different size screens. Okay, on slide two, we're gonna make some other changes here as well. Let's start off by changing the background of this image to the background we chose for the other part of the project. And the other thing we want to do is bring in our image of Nick once again. So I'm just gonna put this uh, onto the same portion and we're gonna change the text here. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste some text that I've prepared for this here. We'll also get rid of the image in the background of the parent fluid box as well. And we'll just stick with white for that. I'm just gonna copy my continue button and we'll paste it down here as well. Again, let's check it out, make sure it looks good on responsive design. This first fluid box will disappear if there's not enough room to show the image of Nick, but otherwise we'll see it for larger type devices. Now let's go on to slide three. Let's select our parent level fluid box and we'll replace that with our auto background image. And for the first fluid box, we'll switch that to a solid color and we'll get rid of the, this content here. And I'm just adding our continue button from the previous slide. I'm also gonna add a large rectangle and we'll change that from the default over to just a white rectangle that is about 60% opacity, maybe 70% looks good. We'll uncheck maintain aspect ratio so it fills the space here. And let's change some settings of our fluid box here. We'll uh, set the horizontal padding to be 20 and the vertical to also be 20. Also, we want to make sure that 
Maintain aspect ratio is turned off and we'll choose stretch to fit. And I don't need my continue button to be so large. So I'll just resize my large rectangle to take up most of the space here. The other thing I'm going to do is select the fluid box itself, move over to the position panel. And what we're going to do is choose a percentage. So in this case here, we're going to go with 75%. And let's start to customize this rectangle here. We need it to be a multi-state object. We're going to select it, go to the properties inspector and go into state view. And we need to make a version of this rectangle for each of the three different packages that Nick sells. We're just going to put a message on the screen that instructs learners to drag each package here to see more. Let's go ahead and create three additional states here. So the first one will be called bronze. Next will be silver. And next will be gold. Starting with the bronze state, we're going to need to provide some text that explains what the bronze state includes and how much it costs. Similarly, we're going to do the same for silver and gold. I'm going to further enhance this multi-state object by making the background of the shape for each of the states to represent uh, what it actually is here. So for the bronze package, we're going to switch that from a solid fill over to image fill. And I'm going to import in a little image that represents the color bronze. We'll do the same thing for silver and gold. That looks kind of cool. Let's exit the state now. Now over in this fluid box, we need to add a total of four different shapes. For the first one, I'm going to put in the word packages so people understand that below are a choice of packages available to them. And we're going to make this completely transparent. Type in bronze using our cool font, silver and gold. And we can use the same backgrounds for each of the bronze, silver and gold to help accentuate this particular interaction. So let's go ahead and select the fill pattern for the bronze, silver, and gold. Looks good. So now what we need to do is create our drag and drop interaction. Here we're going to drag one of the three items over here over to this drop target, and this will update the selection that's made. So I'm gonna click on my window dropdown menu and select drag and drop, and then select the drag and drop tab create a new interaction. We'll move our submit button because we're not going to use a submit button for this interaction. Now let's select bronze, silver, and gold. From the drag and drop panel, we'll select those to be drag sources and we'll select our drop target and identify that to be our drop target. Now in this case, when we drag the bronze, silver, or gold into here, we want the actual drag object to disappear or appear to disappear. So we're gonna set its size and opacity to zero. And I'm actually gonna change the snap behavior to absolute. Uh, when you start writing advanced actions or shared actions, it's really important to label your objects. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that my drag objects are properly labeled. So we'll select those one by one. So rather than calling the bronze drag object smart shape seven, we'll call it bronze drag object. Do the same for silver and gold. Also, let's make sure our drop target has a proper name as well. We'll just simply call it drop target. So in this case, our drag and drop is a little more advanced. We're going to need an advanced action, which we'll then save as a shared action so we can use it over and over again. So we're going to click on the project drop down menu and go to advanced actions. The first thing we're going to need is a variable to keep track of which package has been selected. So I'm going to click on the variables button here and we're going to add a new variable and we'll just call that underscore selected package. Click close. And this is a very simple advanced action. We'll call this selecting package. 
and we are going to assign selected package with the literal value and in this case here we'll choose the word associated with each of the three packages. We're going to just pick bronze for right now. So I'm going to type bronze and then I'm going to change the state of our drop target to be bronze as well. I'm going to save this as an action in case I need to refer back to it. But before I close, I'm going to save as a shared action as well. And what we're going to do is put in a description for each of the items below. So I'm going to uh, enable this parameter for bronze and I'm going to say name of package. I'm going to say drop target and state of drop target for package. Just a little reminder so that I know what each of these parameters does. So let's save this as a shared action, click OK, and now we can click Close. So with our drop target selected, let's go back into our drag and drop interaction and go into Object Actions. So we have three possible things that could be dragged into this drop target. We want to do a couple of things here. We don't want more than one object in the drop target at a time. So rather than accepting all, we're going to change it to a count of one. And what we're going to do is if someone drags in another object, rather than rejecting it, we're going to replace the object that's there right now. Now what we need to do is execute our shared action for each one of these drag and drops. So let's click no action and change that to execute shared action. And now I'm going to click on the action parameters icon. And in this case here, we're dealing with the bronze package. So we're going to put in the name of the bronze package. We're going to identify which is the drop target because we're going to need to change the state of that drop target over to the bronze package. Let's hit save, click OK, and repeat that for silver and gold. Let's see what this looks like on different screen sizes. So it's making this particular fluid box disappear. So we want to make sure that we're unchecking optional. We want to keep that section around there. And I don't know if that looks very good. Let's, uh, let's reconsider how that layout's going to be. I think what we should do is that when it gets too small to fit on a wide screen, maybe what we'll do is we'll wrap to another row. So what will happen is, yeah, that looks better they'll stack on top of one another and still give you the ability to drag and drop those packages. Let's move down to slide number four. And like before, we're going to get rid of the content that's here. In this case, we're going to keep everything squeezed in a row. So if we select our parent fluid box, we'll see that that's set up uh, appropriately there. And for each of our fluid boxes, also squeeze in a row. I think what I'll do though is I'll get rid of the extra padding that came from the Quick Start projects and just keep it down to a minimum. And like before, we're gonna uncheck this first fluid box from being optional so it stays on screen. Now for each of these, what we're going to do, I'm gonna borrow my Continue button from the previous slide and we'll pop that down here. And I'm going to need some smart shapes to fill these fluid boxes. So let's start off with one. And on this side, I'm going to need a total of six smart shapes. So I'm going to duplicate this five times. We'll make sure that maintain aspect ratio is unchecked. I'm going to duplicate it once more, but drag this over to the other fluid box on top of the continue button and we'll duplicate that four more times. Let's move that continue button back down to the bottom. So here I'm going to select the other fluid boxes and we're going to change that to a solid fill. We're going to make it white and we'll go with 60% opacity. I'm going to do the same thing for these fluid boxes here and I'll let you in on a little secret. This bottom fluid box just there for a spacer. So I'm going to make it entirely transparent so that learners won't see it at all. The first fluid box on the left is just going to be instructions. So I'm going to paste my instruction message over there. And the remaining fluid boxes, 
will be the optional add-ons that Nick can sell each person who's using his services. And again, like before, it's important that you label your objects. So for this one here, we'll call that engine steam clean. Next will be trunk detail, wheel rim rat waxing. That's hard to say. And odor elimination. Now this first smart shape, its purpose is actually going to be to let you know which package was selected on the previous slide. So we need this to be a multi-state object. So I'm gonna go into state view and we'll click new state and we'll type in bronze, silver, and gold. Starting with the bronze, I'm gonna paste in the text that corresponds to that package and do that for the silver state and the gold package. Let's exit the state now, and let's make sure the remaining smart shapes on this slide are labeled. So for this one, we'll call it option one, option two, option three, and option four. Now for this slide here, the on enter action will determine what is displayed over here, whether it's bronze, silver, or gold. So let's write that advanced action. So we're gonna click on the actions tab of our slide, go into on enter actions and execute advanced actions. Uh, it's selecting our package advanced action is showing up here, but we're gonna change that because we need to write an all new advanced action. So let's click the create a new action icon and we'll call this on enter slide four. So this is going to be a conditional advanced action, and we're actually going to use a total of three tabs. So for this first one, we'll call it bronze, and we're going to basically ask the question, if selected package is equal to the literal value bronze, and make sure you type this exactly as you did in the previous shared actions, we're going to change the state of our smart shape 17 to bronze. And I forgot to label it, but we'll make sure to correct that. We're gonna save this as an action, click OK, click close, and let's make sure that this is labeled properly. We'll call this selected package slide four, and let's continue to edit our on enter advanced action here. So now what I can do is duplicate this very same advanced action two more times. So we'll duplicate that decision two times here and let's just relabel the second one to be silver and the third one will be called gold. And now we've got basically the structure we need, we just need to make some small changes. So here for the silver one, we're gonna change that to the literal value silver and then we're gonna change the multi-state object to silver as well. Let's do the same for gold. And gold. So now we have our on enter slide advanced action that will display the appropriate selected package. Select update action to save those changes. Click close. And now the last thing we wanna do is create a drag and drop on this page where users can drag the selected options and add them to their order. So let's go over to drag and drop. First thing we'll do is add to the slide an interaction for drag and drop. Let's move that submit button out of the way again. And we'll go ahead and we'll mark all of our drag objects. So return to the drag and drop panel and mark those as drag sources. And here we'll do the same thing with our drop targets. So in this case here, I'm calling these drop targets. So what we need at this uh, point is we actually need to store these drag and drops into some variables. Now you can't do that directly, but through the actions of your drag and drop, you can assign a certain value for each variable. So to do that, we're gonna go into the project dropdown and first of all, create the variables that we need. So in this case here, we'll add a new variable and we'll call this underscore add on one, save and duplicate that till we have four variables. There we go. So we've got add on one, two, three, and four. Let's hit close. So again, we'll select the first of our drop targets, go to object actions, 
unselect accept all and set it up to replace any that have been already placed in those drag and drop targets. So let's click on no action. And what we're going to do is assign add on one in this case with a very precise message here. It's going to be engine steam clean hyphen dollar sign 80 bucks. Let's uncheck continue playing the project and click OK. And we'll repeat this for trunk detail, wheel, rim, waxing, and odor elimination. So once you've assigned all the possible messages for each of the optional items, click OK. And we'll repeat that for option two, option three, and option four. Okay, so I have all of the assignments to the variables for all four of my drop targets. And we'll go down to slide five now. Again, like before, we'll get rid of the existing content that's there. I'm going to put the background image in place. Put the image of Nick into our first fluid box. I'm going to delete this particular title. And we're going to change this fluid box to be just a solid white background. And we're gonna use this particular subtitle. We're gonna create a multi-state object out of it. The first default value will be when it's a bronze package. We'll add a state for the silver package. And let's update the text for that. And I'm gonna right click on the second state and duplicate that state and we'll call that gold. Now starting with the normal state, which is our bronze package, we're actually going to put those variables that we were assigning into the text of this particular object here. So I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to use the little insert variable icon from my properties inspector and we'll select add on one. 50 characters is fine. Hit enter again and repeat that till I have all of those add on variables added. And I just need to replicate this on the two other multi-state objects so that we'll have uh, all of the different possible add-ons that have been selected. And then users will be able to see exactly what they've selected. So we'll exit this state here. And I'm just going to copy my continue button from the previous slide. We'll use that here as well. Although first I'll resize it so that it doesn't take up so much space. And let's just add a little bit of padding around this so that there's some nice space between those objects. What we're going to do is we're going to create a final Nick Automotive detailing survey. And this is really simple to do uh, using a web object. You can go to a website such as SurveyMonkey or Google Forms and create a survey form for your customers to fill out. I've already done that in advanced. We'll just add it to this final slide so that customers can give their thoughts whether Nick did a great job or not. So I'm going to select the fluid boxes here and uh, we'll change those to our background image and we'll get rid of the background image here. We'll add our picture of Nick so they can be reminded of what a great guy he was. And I'm going to delete the content from the right hand fluid box. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to insert a web object into this fluid box here. I'm going to have this particular web object fill the fluid box. Let's make sure to uncheck maintain aspect ratio and stretch to fit is turned on for that fluid box. And all we need to do is add the URL for our survey. And there we have our Nick Automotive Detailing Survey. Let's do a preview of this project, make sure everything runs well. So obviously we have our slide where we've learned that Nick is trustworthy. Let's try our drag and drop, selecting the package. Looks great. And you can see the uh, old packages get moved back over. Love it. Hit continue. And now we're going to choose our options. Click continue and then we'll see that we've selected the bronze package and all of these options here 
And of course, once they're done, customers will be able to fill out the survey accordingly. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.